Welcome back to Classroom Brew, guys, the podcast that feels like teacher happy hour, just podcast form. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, my name is Ryan, and if you are a Patreon member, this is available as this is available. Had a stroke for a second uh, as a video podcast. So for that and uh, different podcast merch, for example, we have our Classroom Brew koozies and coasters and uh, shot glasses. Head on over to Patreon.com/classroombrew. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com/slash classroom brew um weird weird thing to to point out uh is that every so often we do get a few comment trolls uh so we'll definitely get into that um uh but the the whole comment hero segment we will get into that later uh the nice thing about the comment hero section and i think a lot of you guys have really enjoyed that one uh is because it's it's easy to find there's never a shortage especially uh, nowadays, especially because we've got the uh, inauguration coming up, and uh, there's no shortage of, <laughs> of uh, uh, content for that. So um, I did want to point out that <laughs> I thought this was bullshit, uh, but apparently Dell is selling PlayStation 5s, like the Sony thing. It's like available on the Dell store. And I was like, I, I guess the CPS... Chromebooks are Dell, but I don't trust you to do anything. Uh, I think my dad, that was his first laptop back when I was a kid, but absolutely not. Um, there was a trend that I thought was interesting. And, you know, I don't know if we could... You know, let's, let's make it... Let's make it our... Oh, shit! Moment. Uh, talking to some kids about, like, life after high school, like some of our seniors... And there's still a number of them that seem to think that, um, like when we ask them, like, what do you want to do after high school? There's a number of them that think that they're going to the NBA. And we've talked about this before on the podcast. I've seen some of them play. I've seen their jumper. I've seen their free throws. Their, their free throw percentage is in, insanely low. And for some of them, they truly believe that they're going pro. This is just a, a holding bay for their their pro career as as um, professional athletes in one of the most difficult uh, difficult sports in the world. Where uh, truly the numbers are uh, the least in your favor. We're talking a roster of ten with maybe two reserves. Like at least an NFL team, you get what is it, fifty three men on a roster. Major League Baseball, you get what twenty five, and then they expand for the playoffs. But the NBA. You want to get on the court, you got to beat you got to beat five other guys and that's assuming, you know, uh well really one or two cuz position wise, but making the roster, yikes. But we got some kids that they're very convinced that they will be making it to the NBA. And you know, I don't want to shit on them. I don't want to wind up on some some future biggie smalls thing saying this is for all the teachers that never said I'd blah 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 blah. blah. Not saying that. I'm just saying maybe you should take the motto of it's not just practice makes perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. Like you make you you miss twelve free throws and you call it a day for practice and you're like that was good, that was real good. <laughs> I'm gonna take a dozen more, man. That wasn't that looked awful. For this one, I'm drinking in a good old Iowa City uh, Brothers, the the bar, the chain that pretty much at all colleges. This is an old mug, but it's from Mug Club. Uh, but I've got uh, my usual rum and mango. And it, it feels new. It feels different because it's not old mango juice from whenever I bought mango juice when the quarantine first started. When quor the quarantine, sound like an old person. When quarantine first started. Um, but that's what we're rocking right now. Uh, so again, if you're if you're new to the podcast, I encourage you. Maybe you're out on a walk or, or maybe you... Um, Maybe you're you're chilling in your car, but if you're in a location where it's acceptable for you to, um, to have a beer, I would encourage you to to do so uh, during this time. Now I want to see too. Do you can see me if you're if you're on the video podcast? You can see me playing around uh, on my iPad right now because I'm using my phone now. That's something that's different. Uh, for the videos, because it looks so much better. And if the video cuts out, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, I figured I would try it. Um, 
and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. That's okay. Um, I know that in the last video we did the two, um, the two cameras, and I thought that looked pretty good. Uh, but it wasn't really something that uh, seemed sustainable. Uh, I think a lot of people, I made that episode available to more people because I wanted to get a little more reach for all the effort to make sure it syncs. Uh, so we'll see how it goes with this one. Um, if it works out, great. If not, I mean, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, but that's where we're at. Uh, I was talking to some of my teacher friends, too, like people I went to grad school with, people that I've met at PDs and things like that. And I was a little bit alarmed uh, at the <laughs> the the issues that we we each have in our own different uh, different circumstances. Like uh, I had a, a friend of mine from uh, I don't remember where I met him, but I, I say I'm not trying to out anybody. But uh, I had a friend of mine that was talking about like, man, I just my my kids do too much when I have a substitute teacher. <laughs> Like, I just want him to simplify things and, and not worry so much about, you know, always trying to please me, even when I'm not, when I'm not there. And I was like, oh my God, like, I'm, I'm just happy if, <laughs> if like my students do uh, anything, like write their name down when they have a, uh, a substitute teacher. So this is like a, this is a whole different problem here. Or someone talking about like, man, my, my AP students, they just. They try so hard during this pandemic. Meanwhile, I'm like, ah, my kids ask me every day about leaving AP. <laughs> these are these are two different scenarios, my friend. Uh, literally, my friend. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to act. <laughs> Cause it's like, I don't want them to get the impression that I'm like a shit teacher or anything, but it's definitely like the output I get when I'm in my classroom versus the output I get when it's a substitute. <laughs> like there's no amount of potential consequences or, or, uh, you know, threats for lack of a better word, uh, that'll get him to do much of, much of anything. Uh, truly. I, I mean that. And, you know, there's obviously some outliers. Um, I remember one time though, there was, <laughs> there were a couple teachers that I don't know why, uh, maybe I just don't have my ear to the grindstone enough. But there were a couple teachers that, um, no oh, weird, uh, they have like a, a spy account because they, they have some sort of a role where they, they have to check and make sure that the internet traffic is, is safe or something. I don't know. Clearly I don't do this stuff. Um, but they were, they were like, yeah, you've seen the, like, they were showing me some of these kids' Facebooks and I was like, this is kind of weird. But there was one kid that like, it was the day that there was a sub in there and they were like, this was not the kid that took a video of my sub sleeping at my desk, but it was pretty close to it. Um, so like it was, it was, uh, like this kid literally taking selfies. There were kids that were in my, and this is a day that I wasn't there. It was my first year. Uh, I don't remember where I was a PD probably. And, uh, yeah, just kids that I was like, you're not in my class period. Like you, you should have been in my class period earlier, but you were absent. Now you're there. Like you had me first period. Why are you in there? Eighth period. Um, so, you know, point being the, the difference is it's, it's staggering when, uh, when you've got your, yourself in the classroom versus when you have a sub covering. And I just, it, it was funny to me because I, I, I don't know, I guess, I, I guess it's based on where I teach. I couldn't really relate to what some of my teacher friends, and by the way, nobody's wrong. You can still have your qualms if you teach in the best school in the world, uh, or if you teach in one of the worst. Uh, not saying that I'm part of that, like, A or B. Um, but, yeah, I just, I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was weird. I didn't realize that just, you know, four short years was, you know, going to make that big a difference in, in, our, uh, in our trajectories. So, anyways, that's, I thought that was interesting. Um, later in this episode, I thought we would uh, try out the thing that we talked about earlier, which is uh, trying to DM some celebrities, and we'll see how that goes with voice command, too, on the thing. But, um, yeah. Which, speaking of PD, I was in a PD like a week ago. By the time the episode comes out, it'll be even longer than that. And everyone's so timid. Like, it could be something like uh, like a, an icebreaker, which I'm already not a fan of, and it'll be like, um, say your favorite color. Or something like that. And there's always that one person that when it's their time, especially when they're online and they go, all right, uh, 
Jim, uh, you go ahead. So what, what school are you from? What do you teach? And, uh, and what's your favorite color? And they always go, I, I just, I just want to say everyone, thank you so much for your responses so far. I appreciate that. We have such a diverse group of people in front of us. Is it okay if I, is it okay if I say two favorite colors? Cause I just can't pick. And the PD person's always like, yeah, it's okay. Can you just say a color so we can move? <laughs> it's always so timid. And I just, uh, maybe I'm being an asshole, but it's just like, yeah, go ahead. You don't need to ask permission. Go for it. No one's going to be mad unless you ask a question with the last few minutes of uh, uh, of the, the PD lab. Like we got like five minutes and uh, and then you ask, you decide to ask your very specific independent questions. This, by the way, is a great opportunity uh, for anyone that's thinking about starting a podcast. Uh, I, I am multitasking the shit out of this one. If you're listening, you have no clue. If you are watching, you, you might um, you might have a clue. Um, I was a little worried because there was an article about Betty White, and it scared me. I thought she died, but she's turning ni- she turned 99. Um, and I guess... Uh, we got a comment hero. Welcome to the comment hero of the week. When someone's being an ass in the comment section, but they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. What's going on is you failed fucking social studies. Or when you see someone call that person out, they are our comment hero of the week. Yeah! Even though some heroes do call out those idiots, remember, don't call out a comment hero in the comment section. You can't fix them, and you can't fix stupid. <sighs> Ivan E. You dunce. Yes, I said dunce. Welcome to the teacher podcast. Um, Ivan E. commented on the Betty White thing. I was looking just trying to make sure that my hope in humanity wasn't completely lost. And uh, Ivan or Ivan E. decided to comment. I heard she wanted a Mandingo party or something. You, dude. Why did... Normally, if someone's 99, I think it's a fair bet that they're going to be, you know, they got some racist beliefs. But we're at the point now where, well, one, it's Betty White. She's a national treasure. But, like, in the comment section, do you really have to say what you're thinking? It's not a good joke. Now, should you have made it in the first place as a joke or not? No. But was it even a good one? No. And that's the problem. Therein lies the problem. Um, there's also an article I saw. Uh, <laughs> uh, some people are being very rude uh, about people wanting to be called something different than their given name, which is a whole different thing. Like, if it's someone's pronouns and everyone's complaining, just shut the fuck up and call people what they want to be called. Does it really inconvenience you just because somebody wants to be called whatever they're comfortable with, whatever, whatever they identify with? Does it impact you at all? People being like, "Well, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me personally, but but I I think this is this whole pronoun thing is getting ridiculous. There's a million gender. Whatever you want to be called, it's fine. That's it. That's the end of the discussion. Cool. Does it matter? Shouldn't. Let them do what they want to do. Um. So I guess the one of the our next comment hero for this one should we cue the music? No, we're not going to cue the music again. Uh, there was an article about the the teachers that, uh, and by the way, solidarity, I'm there with you. Uh, teachers in CTU, the Chicago Teachers Union, uh, they decided to, uh, rather than go in person to an unsafe school, they decided to teach outside remotely. So still teaching their kids online, uh, but instead of doing it in their classroom, they did it outside in the freezing cold in a Chicago winter. <laughs> and... Um, the the comments you'd ima- you could imagine are obviously very negative. People saying, oh, go back to work, you lazy fucks, and, and stuff like that. Uh, people that have no clue what's going on. And uh, someone pointed this out to me last week. I don't remember if I said it or not. But uh, So I'm going to be proctoring the PSAT pretty soon. And during the day, in the email that was sent to students and staff, uh, there's going to be meals provided for them to eat during testing, breakfast, lunch, and snacks. Now, currently, indoor dining is uh, not a thing in Chicago. I don't know where, where you are, wherever you're listening to this, if you guys are still in that, in that phase. 
And uh, it's interesting because apparently it doesn't apply to schools. And I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, in the room that I'm proctoring. I think I'm in the lunchroom or something like that, which is relatively spaced out, but it's like 25 plus kids or something like that, just a regular class in a hopefully bigger space. But uh, people were just, you know, ripping people to shit, like go to work, you lazy teachers. But they seem to forget that the rules that they're setting in place, whether it's from a city or a state, doesn't seem to apply to the teachers. Just like how uh, they're sending teachers into schools, but uh, they're not part of the priority list for uh, for the vaccine. So I thought that one was that was a big yikes. Um, so it, I don't have a specific comment here for that one. I just you know anyone that decided to to fuck with teachers and get on their our bad side by claiming that we're being lazy by not wanting to report to work when really most of us are doing 12 to 16 hour days because we have to change to be online. So if anything, like, trust me, it would be so much easier. I was telling Katie this. I was like, if I went back in, like when I first like student taught and then there was time off for my first week of teaching, teaching, I was like, man, I feel rusty. I don't really feel that rust at all. You know what I mean? And if anything, I'm going to feel like, like riding a bike, except for like the training wheels are also weights. So when it's time to like finally go back in person, it's going to not only feel like the training wheels are off again with the whole like online structure, you're kind of limited what you're going to do, but like the weight is also off. It's going to be so much easier for me to do what I want to do and have been able to do uh, with kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's our, those are our two comment heroes, our multiple comment heroes. Uh, you guys can all go to hell. Uh, yeah, that one was brutal. Um, I did see this one. So you know that I love doing different BuzzFeed things related to teachers. Because it's always interesting when someone that's clearly not a teacher creates something that's talking about, this is the teacher you would be, you know? So this one is, again, BuzzFeed. Uh, make a school supply list for your students and we'll tell you which subject you should teach. Now I will mention, I have not done this before, and I'm not sure if it's going to be fictional or not because the 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 cover photo also featured Harry Potter, which you may remember from last week with that game that we did. Um, I don't. I already forgot, but we were we were answering questions and figuring out which uh, Harry Potter student student and teacher, which Harry Potter student and teacher. So, very first item. This is basically us making a supply list and seeing what we should teach according to this uh, genius. So, very first item. It's either uh, a two subject notebook, a one subject notebook, a two pocket folder. A three-prong notebook, okay, uh, a composition notebook, or a graph notebook. I, I guess a one-subject notebook. We'll keep it simple. Choose another item: calculator, tab dividers. Man, I wish my kids would use those. Uh, two sets of graphing paper, filler paper. What is filler paper? Am I dating myself, or or making myself seem I, I don't know, old or young? Index cards, sticky notes. Oh, well, I don't know what filler paper is. Maybe I sound like an idiot, but I don't. Let's go with sticky notes. Annotating, you know? Choose something else. Black, blue, black, and or red pens. Colored pencils. Ooh, that sounded bad. Uh, pencils of different... Uh, there are pens of different colors. Uh, highlighters, sharpies, ruler, block erasers. I'm gonna. Hmm, I'm either going with the the colorful pens or the highlighters. Let's go with highlighters because I'm sick of being asked to give my highlighters up because I don't have them. Okay. Uh, choose an item: clear tape, a pack of glue, a pack of glue sticks, scissors, mini stapler, hand sharpener, dry erase marker. This is for the students. Man, if I leave my dry erase markers out, I have to put them on my desk when they're not being used. If not, there's just gonna be dicks everywhere. <laughs> dicks all over all the the boards because they're like oh dry erase marker this is an opportunity it's a real opportunity to showcase my art um i don't know hand sharpener most people use mechanical pencils i'm gonna go with hand sharpener because then i'm assuming if the kids are bringing that then maybe for once they'll bring their own pencil choose a binder three three inch binder display easel binder zipper binders like a trapper keeper remember trapper keepers two inch binder data binders portfolio let's go 
two inch binder, right? I'm assuming like a three ring binder, right? Lastly, choose an item for the classroom. Wipes, tissues, hand sanitizer, paper towels, any extra books, hand soap. What are you, CPS? We have to choose between wipes, hand soap, hand sanitizer, and paper towels? <laughs> Shit. And tissues? Uh, I guess hand sanitizer, because technically you could, I guess, use that and just wipe it around, and then they'll be like, why is this table sticky? Like, don't worry about it. Hand sanitizer. All right, my results. <clears throat> So again, this was make a school supply list for your students, and we'll tell you which subject you should teach. And not to add too much suspense, but I would kill for my kids to be that dedicated to show up at any point during the school year with the one item on my syllabus I require. A pencil. And I recommend a folder. So the, the result I got, the subject that this thing that I should teach, not that far off, sociology. For context, if you haven't listened or if you're new, I do teach social studies. Not sociology, but pretty much anything social studies, I've taught it or will teach it or am currently teaching it. So that was fun. I don't know how accurate though. I mean, it makes sense. I didn't say the calculator answers, so that that tracks. Uh, that makes total sense. Uh, I'm with you on that. All right, so <clears throat> um, I guess last little piece here, uh, some different celebrities. Now, I would add that the the podcast Instagram is certainly not famous. I haven't had any of this drink so far. A few gulps to get caught up. Uh, I am not verified because there aren't that many followers at Classroom Brew on social media, Instagram and, and Twitter. Um, but let's let's pick out some someone that's famous. Kristen Bell. She stands out to me. I feel like she would be the one to support the cause. So what we're going to try to do is DM a few celebrities and just copy and paste it and see see if they would support teachers in this this whole debacle, this this whole uh uh controversy. Oh, you can't message Kristen Bell. This whole controversy with uh opening schools or not. Maybe I should try somebody else. Who's like somebody that's this could sound so rude. Uh not on the same level. Let's try Joe Sanagato. He's got a great podcast. Podcasts, plural. Hey, Joe. And of course, there will be a follow-up. We'll see uh, if these guys respond. We'll do a voice command. Just wanted to see if you would support teachers in their strife against reopening non-safe schools, period. P.S. I'm doing this with voice command on my podcast. So I'm so sorry about that. Bye. I love the podcast. Bye. Oh, I did the wrong bye. Should I just copy and paste that and see how it goes? All right. Joe Santagato sent. Nice. Another celebrity. This would be a great time to be uh, live. Let's try Danny Lopriori. He is also... He is also... He was with... Uh, What's his name? With Joe Santagato on his podcast. I don't know if he's... He's got he's probably verified at this point. <clears throat> hey, Danny. I'm doing my own podcast, which is teachers drinking beer and all that good stuff, and just wanted to see if different people who happen to have a large following, comma, if you support teachers in their strife against the unsafe reopening of schools. Send. Cool. I like doing it with voice command. This is so much quicker than me having to type it and say it out loud as we're going through. Let's try Dax. Dax has a podcast, a much more famous one than mine. We're going to go to Dax himself, if it'll let me. Of course. Hey, Dax. Love armchair expert. Just wanted to see if uh, you supported teachers and their fight against reopening schools that are unsafe. Period. Would love to hear from you. Period. Uh -uh. Let's fix that because it made his name Dex instead of Dax. No disrespect. We'll send that. Should we try Monica Padman for the same podcast? Monica. She's the fact checker on that. ML Padman. See, she is verified as well, so this is dangerous. We're probably not going to get through to a lot of people. Hey, Monica. 
I'm currently recording my own podcast right now and just trying to get a feel for different influencers and celebrities and whether or not they would support teachers and their fight against the reopening of unsafe schools, period. Look at that. We are an efficient machine right now. Uh, let's see, who else, who else, who else is famous? Who else is famous? We probably have tapped out that, that industry right there with, the, with the, the three people that are related to uh, different, uh, different podcasts. Good try, Bert. Bert Kreischer, he's definitely, he's, he's tweeted at Joe Dombrowski, so maybe there's a connection there. We'll try this. Let's see. Hey, Bert, love two bears, one cave, comma. Just wanted to see if you and maybe even Tom supported teachers and their fight against the reopening of unsafe schools during the pandemic. Cool. Again, we're on a roll. I should have done this, I should have done this with the email. And then I could have just edited the edited the email uh, afterwards. Man, who else is famous right now? The Rock. I think The Rock is a good one to end with, and then we'll 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 do some more of these off the air, and we'll I'll I'll report back, and we'll see what else is going on. Hey, Dwayne, comma, can I call you Dwayne, comma? I'm typing this with voice command, and I recognize that it is spelling your name different each time. So I apologize for that, period. Just wanted to see if different celebrities and influencers and people with a large following, if they supported teachers and their fight against the unsafe opening of schools during the pandemic, period. Love your work, exclamation point. Or is it Mark? Exclamation Mark. I should have said that. That's what I should have said. So I think that's that's good for this one. Um, big shout out to our Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast. If you would like to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash classroom brew. Uh, if you want to send anything in, you can DM me on Instagram and Twitter, I guess, but mostly Instagram at classroom brew, no spaces. Or again, email me classroombrew at gmail.com. Uh, email is the easiest one because if you want to send me a bunch of stuff, uh, it'll go to a computer, not just to a phone or a tablet. So... Uh, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the oh shit and I like that that segment's coming back. Uh, the oh shit and the comment hero. I will continue to DM a few different celebrities and influencers and see if we can get a response and I will report back in an upcoming episode. So uh, thank you guys. If you're new to the podcast, cheers. Welcome to it. And as we say every week, until next week, class dismissed.